She's April. And she's Molly. And we are the Book Besties. It's, I don't know. It's men making decisions for women, right? We don't need it. I think this might be a bigger book fight than our first one. That's why we get dogs. You need an adjective, crooked. Harry, did you put your name in the goblet of fun? Did you put your name in the goblet? I truly try to do that different every time. <laughs> I've been thinking that we probably should just stop recording that as an intro. It's just like pick one and have Tom slide it in. No, so but it's fun this way. But we're only doing it because of YouTube. Right. <laughs> and I find it entertaining. So uh, stop moving your microphone. <laughs> I'm trying to get it to sit put. Sorry. Stay. Um. <laughs> So we are recording a book today that's not till like way later in our schedule. Yeah. So for the first time ever, we are actually recording out of order because yes. I have some big things coming up over the next couple of months with Cub Scout Pack that I'm in charge of that my boys are in. And yeah. you also have some cool A lot stuff of family up. stuff going on. Yeah. And yeah. So we're just busy, and we didn't want to take time off in the middle of a, a season. Right. So we decided to slide in this episode when we could, which is being filmed a few episodes ahead, and we, uh, it's what we had to do. So you guys are listening to this at, like, the end of the month, right? It's uh, towards the end of March. Okay. Not the last week, but the second to last week. We are filming this the same week we filmed uh, Addie, Addie LaRue. LaRue. Yeah. <laughs> so we're really off schedule. Yeah. But hey, I, it's what's cooking. <laughs> it, it's what we had to do because we are covering something today that we are both comfortable with. Um, and For sure. And, it, it, and we wanted to do so many new books this season that were not familiar to either one of us. Right. But... Reading takes time, guys. Word. <laughs> so. Word. Audiobook, physical book, ebook, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It is right. time consuming. Right, right. Especially when you're taking notes as you go. Right. And because my dumbass wanted to do a series in the middle of my busy time. But your favorite series. It of is all in fact time. <laughs> it is in fact my favorite series of all time. People never believe me. They think I'm just telling them that because it's YA and I'm, you know, no, a it's librarian. A series. It's literally my favorite series of all time. I've read it many times. It's a yearly reread for me. Um, I both the physical and the audio books. And this time I actually got to hear a new version of the audio book. So we'll talk about those later. But we are going to be talking about today, The Hunger Games. The series. one, the only. The Hunger, Hunger Games. Games. So this is by Suzanne Collins. This is the box set that I actually bought at Borders when it was going out of business. That was um, a long time ago. Yeah, I've had that long. And we will maybe slide in some information. This is the prequel book, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Which I came haven't out. read yet. Yeah, so this one came out in 2020. Um, you know, good time to release a book about evil leadership during the pandemic. <laughs> Um, so, so I read that one, um, at the start of the pandemic, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about right. Hunger Games. Now, if you've never, if you've lived under a rock and you don't know mm -hmm. who Sia, Suzanne Collins is, Collins is, she's also one of the writers and creators of Little Bear, the PBS show. Right. And she, <laughs> uh, if you know anything about juvenile fiction, she writes the Gregor series as well. Yeah. Um, so she's pretty well known and published and I'm, if you don't know what we're talking about I, I i don't know how you got here but welcome i sort of feel like when we talk about this it's gonna be like when we did the harry potter episodes yeah. it's sort of like if you've been living under a rock i guess you don't know about this but so part of what we're gonna do with these questions i'm gonna give a synopsis of each book mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do the synopsis last we'll questions 
We'll do a synopsis. We'll ask questions. We'll do a yes. synopsis. Ask questions. So this episode might be a little long, like our Harry Harry Potter episodes, since we're doing three books instead of one. But um, the questions that I prepared for us to talk about today are really not questions about like the actual plot and content of the book. Mm-hmm. They're more about like the overall feeling of this fandom. Yes. Um, and we're diving a little bit deeper into some of the stuff than we would in other series or other books because we are so familiar with these. So coming up this summer, we're mm-hmm. going to do the Shadow and Bone series, and neither one of us have read those. So Which we I'm do that. Which I'm still on the fence about, but we'll get to that when we get there. Well, we maybe will only do the first book. I don't know. But we won't have the same experience with those as we do with The Hunger Games because right. it's something that we both deeply love. Um, so should we get into the synopsis for the first yes, book? Please. All right. So the first book is called The Hunger Games. The, yes. All the books have their own titles. They're not Catching Fire, a Hunger Games novel. However, they in the movies, they, you know, made it yeah. Hunger Games, Catching Fire. Um, but anyway, so the first one is called The Hunger Games. And here's your synopsis. And I'm sorry it's long, guys. I'm sorry. I, ha- I could I, not I'm be not. reined in. I'm not. I could not be reined in. I've read it already. It's good. You can just zip. <laughs> Katniss Everdeen is a 16 year old girl living in the 12th district of Pan Am. She isn't your average district 12 citizen because she has found a way to survive the devastating hunger plaguing everyone else by taking to the woods outside the city's fences and hunting like her late father taught her. But her world is turned upside down the day of the reaping when the ever clueless capital escort Effie Trinket pulls Katniss's younger sister's name for the 74th annual Hunger Games, and Katniss volunteers as tribute to take her place. The Hunger Games, an annual reminder of the dark days, pins 12 boy tributes and 12 girl tributes against each other in a battle to the death. The winner in their district will reap rewards for the rest of their lives, but they have to be willing to be a piece in the Capitals games. Alongside Katniss, Peta Malark will also be fighting for the chance to become victor. But their mingled past becomes more problematic when Peta reveals that he is in love with Katniss on live TV. Katniss, believing this is a strategy to win the games, goes along with it reluctantly, but kind of catches feelings along the way. There's also a lot of fighting, an evil president, and another potential suitor because it's YA dystopian and that seems to be a requirement. The first book ends with blood, gore, and self-sacrifice winning Katniss and Peta the top prize after a rule change allows for two victors. There you go. (sighs) Take a deep breath. I love this series so much. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. So uh, first question. Okay. So when I read these books... um, the movie wasn't out yet. They were making the first film. Right. Um, and so Jennifer Lawrence had already been cast um, and they were making the first film. And so when I picked them up, I just assumed that Katniss was the name that was called at the reaping because, right. I mean, she's the star of the movie, right? Right. So the first big surprise of this book is that Primrose Everdeen, her younger sister, was oh. actually selected for the Hunger Games. Yes. Since both of us have read this prior to the movies coming out, I was wondering if you found this original, like the yes. idea of having her sister be chosen. Catless is a truly selfless character, mm. which I don't know if I always agree with that. But well, okay. in the beginning, when it comes to her sister, when yes. it comes to her sister, Prim, she is a truly selfless character. Yeah, to a fault sometimes, to her own demise, to 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 a point where Katniss can her, her get herself i mean we learned this in the second book i mean her worrying about prim gets her yeah. in trouble in the second book right? Yeah, right and it's just it was i mean i cry every time i read or see it on film every time Me every too. time but that is also a big sister thing i think right Right, because 100%. I instantly put myself in my shoe in Katniss's shoes, and I think of Jesse. Right. And I think right. of the things we went through, and I instantly right. pair those together, and I'm like, "Of course, I would do anything for my sister." Right. So the question is: Is this a surprise? Yes. And what I no. like. Yeah. Well, what I liked about it was the way that she wrote it. That that line, Primrose Everdeen, is the very last two words of the first chapter. Yes. So we are at a stopping point. Yes. 
before we get the reaction from Katniss. And I yes. have to say, Jennifer Lawrence played this, I mean, chef's Spectacular. Kiss. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. amazing. You see it come over her where she's like, okay, okay, okay. Panic. Like she is processing what am I it. Do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And then just like Katniss does in the books, it's, I volunteer. I volunteer right. as tribute. Like, it's, like it's, it's, it takes a couple seconds. And we're there with the, her in the book because of the way that Suzanne Collins made the decision right. to cut the chapter there. I thought it was really brilliant. It's but brilliant. I kind of wonder, so this is kind of a follow-up question. Do you think now that this book is so much a part of pop culture because of the movie, do you think new readers will have the same surprise that Prim's name is called? No, there's too many spoilers in the world. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my kids have a general idea of what had happened in the Hunger Games before they had read them. Right. I mean, it's one of Piper's favorite series. Right. You know, it um, lives reading them and we're kind of, We've kept the, her spoiler free as best we could, right? Right, right. I feel like it is common knowledge, right? Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like when I was reading Harry part Potter. Of the zeitgeist. Yeah, it's just, it's a part of, yeah, exactly. It's a, so ingrained in culture now. Right. It's like when I was reading Harry Potter, even though that was my first time reading them, you knew, I knew a great deal of what was going to happen. Right. I knew Dobby was going to die. I knew. It's um, too much a part of pop culture Dumbledore for it to exactly. not to. Exactly, exactly, exactly. All right. Um, I want to talk about world building. Okay. Because my biggest complaint about the Harry Potter series was that J.K. Rowling didn't use the story to actually build the world. Right. I think Suzanne Collins did that. So I want to know, you're a writer. How do okay. you feel she did with world building? Because we're talking about a dystopian society. Pan right. Am is the states after war and flood and all the things have ruined and they've rebuilt. Right. Um. I feel like first I want to talk about her creation of Pan Am uh-huh. as a writer. Right. Um, um, if you look at the map, she used the United States and breaks it down. Right. And, and there the, are pieces of the U S missing. Right. 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 Which um, makes a lot of sense. It was, I feel like her design and her thought process, it was very clear there. I yeah. like how she integrates it into the story. Yeah. As we're going along and slowly learning, but right. we don't understand and grasp it fully till we're further into the book, right? Yeah, right. We're um we're learning as Katniss moves along in her storyline, right? And like the opposite of Harry Potter, Harry Potter he just throws shit at you. You're learning all the things all the time, real quick, right? And and I feel like. Uh, the way these books give it to us is a slow build and they have different pros and cons. Yeah. I I mean, I think that use what you're describing of mm -hmm. us learning as Katniss learns is her using the story to build the world. Right. Right. I feel like Harry Potter stops the story to build the world. I feel like it's, we have different opinion on this. I feel like it's an informative break, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I kind of write that way too sometimes, but I, I like how she does it. I like mm-hmm. how it doesn't feel like I'm pausing to learn about it. Like in the selection, yeah. right? You know, we right. had a whole, we had, yeah, to, like, we had she, to stop to learn about we it. Had to yeah, stop we had to learn about it. Right. We had, we a, the girls mm-hmm. had a class. Right. I like the gradual shoving it into the storyline as you go. Yeah. And that I is too. hard to do. Yeah. That is really hard to write. Right. You can fill out a world or you can write characters. Figuring out how to integrate those two things and make them one is yeah. hard. I feel like Dr. Har- Deborah Harkness does that really well. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like um, they do that really well in Good Omens. There's a, a lot of books that I could. I haven't read Good Omens with. yet. You do have that coming up, so I will mm-hmm. be reading that. I have seen the. But, he- I do like the way she did it. I I do too. I think it's apples and oranges, though. We can't really compare it. While it's compared to Harry Potter a lot, right? The Hunger Games and Harry Potter's fandoms are compared constantly because they're both YA, which they have nothing in common. Well, I I think the same can be said about Twilight. All three of those came out about the same time, and so we all throw them in this, like, comparison. And to be fair, 
readers of that generation mm -hmm. do like all three of those series. Right. I mean, I don't, but most people I do. I do. Right. Right? But I feel like you're comparing, it's like comparing you and me. While you and I are very similar, there mm -hmm. is a lot different in us. And I, and I just, I don't know. I'm losing my I, train of thought. You're up. I, I disagree <laughs> because I. I disagree because I think Susan. Well, Collins I know that. Did better. I think <laughs> well, she did it better. Um, um, and, and what I, and what I like it, what I like it, what I like is that she used context that we would all be familiar with. So, um, of course, there are official. There's an official map of Pan Am of how it actually looks in Suzanne Collins' brain, which we can put in the description. We'll, we'll put some links to some of the yeah. Hunger Games uh, fandom things, but, um, but uh, what what we know about the way our country currently is. Right. So district 11 takes place in like, what is the agricultural South? Right. Right. And, uh, district 12 takes place in places like Virginia, where they do a lot of mining, Virginia and Pennsylvania. 12 goes all the way up to my neck of the woods where I grew up. Yeah. So 12 and goes up to the upstate right. New York all the way right. down. Right. And it's all mining country. Right? right. So that makes sense in our brains. And farmland. Right. And then they talk about the way that the city is, uh, the capital city is surrounded by mountains. It's, it's in Denver. fucking Denver. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> as soon as she started describing it, and I was yeah. like, I've never yeah. been to Denver, but I and fucking then, know Denver. <laughs> and, then and then you think about District 3 being East Coast. It's Silicon right. Valley. Right. It's Silicon Valley. And they're right. still making... High techy things. So right. to me, I three I think, was in the center. Huh? I thought three was like in the, the like uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma well, area. California doesn't exist anymore. So right. They just moved it in more. But it's right. basically the same like right process. It's Silicon Valley in Oklahoma. Right. 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 Um, okay. So anyway, uh, let's go on to the next question. Okay. In, in the games, Katniss is mostly in her head. The book is written in first person, so even though the, even through the silence of the arena, arena, we know Katniss's thoughts. Did you prefer this viewpoint, or would you have liked a third person POV where we know all the characters' thoughts? I okay. So we're really this actually kind of leans into talking about book versus movie too. So mm -hmm. um, I like I read the books first, then went to yeah. the movies, right? Um. I love how the books are broken down from her point of view. I right. love experiencing it with her. Right. But the movies do such an excellent job mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. giving mm -hmm. us, like, like in the first movie where Hamish is trying to get her sponsors. sponsors. We yeah. have the idea in our head because yeah. if you go went to see the movies, you I assumed you saw the books, read right. the books, right? Right. So, but... In the books, you know, you're assuming Hamish is doing everything he can. Right. The movies confirm it. I right. I don't think, now, I'm sure we'll talk about the movies versus book. We will, yeah. Okay, absolutely. so I'm not going to dive into that too much. But I prefer it through her point of view. I, right. like, Addie LaRue, when we jumped from point of view to point of view, I was confused. I I need a smooth transition when we yeah. jump from point of view, and I don't think this book would warrant it. Does right. that make sense? I, yes, absolutely. And I think I mean I do enjoy, enjoy books that that change point of view, um, but I can't think of another character, at least for the first book. Right. I can't think of another character that I want that point of view. And I actually think it was a really smart decision of Suzanne Collins to keep it first person because you have other books like the Twilight series where Stephanie Meyer made the decision in the last book, we're also going to get Jacob's point of view. And, Which was and really fucking ridiculous. Really? It was just lazy, right? Ridiculous. It was just lazy writing because she couldn't figure out how to transition. basically kill Bella. Right. Without, without somebody witnessing the, that happen. Well, and you know, um, and, and I get it. Like we had to see like, hit, oh, I don't want to talk about Twilight. Anyway. Jacob's the worst. But no, I, I think I, I agree with you that for this book and really the series, I think getting Katniss's viewpoint, it was, it was a smart decision. I think it builds suspense. Yes. Um, now we'll talk more about the movie in a minute, but I will say not everybody who went to the movie enjoyed that. And I know no. your husband and I, and my husband both hadn't read the series. Right. 
and they didn't enjoy the movie. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, do you have a favorite character from the first book? Hey, Mitch. Oh, I love Hey, Mitch. Hey, He's Mitch. such a disaster. <laughs> um, well, my un- he reminds me very much of my Uncle Al growing mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Now, my uncle wasn't a fall down, knock down drunk. Mm-hmm. Uncle Al liked to have fun and drink, but that was mm-hmm. not. But his, I always, as soon as I started reading those books, my Uncle Al came to mind mm-hmm. as Hamish. And I don't know why. And then he just, he's gruff. He's straight forward. He's mm-hmm. honest. Mm-hmm. He's not going to hold your hand, even though it's his yeah. job. So, right. <laughs> Hamish, right. period. And then, um, and then I think Peta after that. Yeah, Peta's my favorite character in the first book. Um, I mean, we I, love Katniss. Don't I love it Katniss. It's it's the opposite effect. I'm sorry to circle back to Twilight, but it's the opposite effect with Twilight. We don't like Bella. She's no. not a likable character because she can't stand on her own two feet. No, nope. but Katniss can. Katniss so can. I really, I really do like Katniss. But Peta is my favorite character. I think he is authentic, mm-hmm. um, and I. I think that the person that he is is a lot stronger than people give him credit for. Well, the the kid that says, I don't want, I want to be more than a piece in their games. Right. He's the kid that's going to fight. Right. I mean, he literally sacrificed himself to protect her. Right. Yeah. He's my favorite character. Um, And I have a major literary crush on him. Like, yeah, I get Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I get that. There's a cute. There's a few uh, boys that I have literary crushes on, and Peta with his damn crooked smile. Which why is that such a YA cliche? But um, you know, he's just. We he's need just, a description. Put crooked in there. Yeah. <laughs> you need an adjective. Crooked. Um, <laughs> but I I I love the boy with the bread. Yeah. You know. But I think it's because the boy with the bread loves selflessly. He does. Yeah. And Absolutely. I, I think we all want that in our lives one way or another. Yeah. yeah. That's why we get dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, PETA, and, he, PETA is a puppy. PETA <laughs> is did, golden retriever energy. You did not say, that's why we get married. <laughs> and that's why we get dogs. <laughs> My dogs will never leave me. Matthew eventually will one way or another. That sounded like you were threatening to murder him. (laughs) (laughs) I brought you into this marriage. I will take you out of it. Um, Word. (laughs) All right. Uh, The book sets a romance inside a deadly world. Is this YA nonsense or a good story? YA nonsense. I don't fucking love love Sophie in this book. While it's cute and it's adorable. Katniss is a, str- and I'm going to rant about this, this whole book, this whole episode. Katniss is a strong, independent woman. She mm-hmm. does not need a fucking boy. Why do we have to keep pushing the storyline? No, but, fucking so. But you can be a strong, independent woman who does not need a man and still want a man. But she never says she wants a man. She makes it very clear from the very beginning. Getting no. She's not going to make children. She's not going to no. get married. She doesn't want those things. But why does she not want those things, Molly? It's she not because them. she doesn't believe in marriage. It's not because she doesn't want to have kids. It's because she doesn't want to do it with the Hunger Games looming over her. Because she tells Gail. Thing. She tells Gail if she didn't live here, she might. She is rat. You are rationalizing her not wanting children for your interpretation of this book. No, it's it's canon. It's in there. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh that my girl gosh. Didn't <laughs> well, okay. Look, look, look. I can concede that she may have not wanted children, and we can talk more about this when we get to the third book. However, I will not concede that she did not want to get married. I- she mentions many times that if things were different, she probably would have ended up with Gail. Her tone and the way she says it is more of like a resolution. Like, I guess this is how it'll end up. Not like I want this to happen. I guess that's my life pattern. Like it is something that is set in stone and that is going to happen to her no matter what. Not that she, she never once says I want to marry him. She says, I guess I eventually will. In the first book. Oh my gosh. In the first book, she said, if she didn't, 
If if this wasn't the world that she lived in, she what would get if, married. Okay, what if I could make candy stripes every time I painted a wall? What if I could... What if is a what if? Just that. It is not an I want. That's you why she... You are interpreting her words. I am interpreting her words because when she that said... your opinion of the interpretation. No, it isn't. It. No, it isn't. It is. Because she said, if it wasn't like this... <laughs> she said if it wasn't like this I would get married and then it's no longer like that so she gets married no oh, oh my gosh no <laughs> no I think this might be a bigger book fight than our first one <laughs> I love these books but my biggest beef with these books is taking a strong confident woman and say, thinking at the end of this series that she felt she needed to get married. Molly, that's not what happens. You are a strong confident woman and so am I and we are both married. It's right. not because right. it's but not I because we needed said, them. I never once said I don't want to. She has insinuated several times that she has no desire for but this. She didn't want to because of the way that her life was. Not because she didn't have the desires. Okay. You're not conceding. You're just saying okay so we can move on. <laughs> Word. <laughs> because we have strongly, we have been arguing this. Ma'am, look at me. You and I have been arguing about this since the last book came out. Remember yes. that. It's this has been the same argument we have had since what fucking year was that? 2012? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> we have been having this argument for 10 years. It's not going to end today on the pod. <laughs> Neither I, of us are going to concede our point. I want it to. Okay. Fine. I love you we'll move so on. Much, but we're fucking moving on because neither of us are conceding. <laughs> we're moving on. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite scene from the first book? Ooh. I love her time with... Um, Oh, shoot. I'm forgetting the little girl's name. Rue. Rue. Uh, her time with Rue um, was very special to me. Uh -huh. And it was it was Suzanne Collins mirroring her relationship with Primrose, right? Uh -huh. And I feel like it was foreshadowing at the same time. Now that I oh, now that I I never even thought about that, but damn it, Molly, you're right. It's foreshadowing, right? <sighs> and especially with like the, the 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 rose petal, the the flowers all around her, mm. and the way that 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 Prim's death happens. Mm. I feel like it was foreshadowing, and all of that just has a symmetry to itself that I loved so uh, much. Uh, well, I'm smart. <laughs> that was a good call. I didn't even think about that before. But no, my favorite scene um, is when they're in the cave mm -hmm. and Katniss basically poisons Peta with the sleep serum. Yes! So she can betray him because she go promised save him. to go save him. She's promised him she will not go to the feast to get the medicine that he needs. Mm-hmm. And that scene, when he realizes what happens, and the look on his face that he gives her, where he knows what has just what happened, are you doing, and he tries to spit it out, and she won't let him. That to me, that moment was the moment that I really believe that Katniss loved him. I think she truly cared for him. I, I think she. I think that she wasn't sure how she felt. I but think, I think we knew she had feelings there. Yeah. Oh, I think it was more of I. I would call it devotion. I don't necessarily mean it was an act of love in that she loved him and wanted to marry him at that point, okay. but I, it was an act of love. Out of she her, loved him like her family yeah. at that point. That was family for her. Um, especially since we learn all PETA did to keep her alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. PETA really is truly a selfless character through and through. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's a great scene. It's a great it is a scene. Great scene. Um, I do love any time. Uh, I also love any time she interacts with her stylist team. Yeah, I think they had I, a good influence on her. At eventually, I think, the, I think the team was crap, but like I loved Cinna. I mean, he's a great character, right? Well, Cinna, yeah, Cinna leads um, the team, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, does this story seem plausible to you? Yes. <laughs> So, do you know what actually inspired Suzanne Collins to write this? No. 
So she said in an interview I read or that I saw or something that she was watching um, things like Survivor and also the news like CNN and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we had entered a phase. If you remember when like Survivor first became big, there were all of these. You know, they had a kid Survivor show, right? No, but that's how a kid almost died. So they had to shut it down. I've never actually watched an entire season of Survivor. I've seen a few episodes. Yeah. But like when when I was in college, um, that was really like the height of that like uh, reality television. Oh, yeah. There was America's Next Top Model and uh, Real World Idols. Right. And then you had the start of things like Survivor and the start of like, uh, what was Trump's Your Fired show? Oh, uh, The The Apprentice. Apprentice. Then there was really wild ones. There was like the uh, they did oh, the Joe Schmo show. Do you remember that? Yeah. Then they did uh, Swan, and the they Swan. took women oh, with the yeah, plastic oh surgery my. and yeah. uh, and Joe Millionaire. Yes, I and mean they were they were like crazy trash. at that point. So that's actually what inspired her to do this, like because All the these Hunger Games shows. Yeah, the Hunger Games is a TV show. Yeah, it's a TV show. It is. And it's, it's a mandatory got, TV show put on by right, the government. Right. And it's got a Lord of the Flies feel to it. Like Very much we're so. All, we're all stuck here. How will we survive? Um, you know. So yeah. I, I think I think it feels plausible. Um, it, 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 I would never put it against. I would never put people above killing children because they would for get entertainment? some political game. For political nope. game. I don't know about entertainment, but for political game. That happens yeah. around the world all the time. Right. So. All right. Um, Senna turns Katniss into the girl on fire. This moniker continues throughout the series. Did Senna start the spark of rebellion or did he empower Katniss to do it? Both. I think. Elaborate. I think um, <clears throat> Senna drew inspiration from who she was. Uh huh. And once he. He became. He was the world's best PR agent in that moment. He yeah. saw who Katniss was raw. He created, was here to make, help her make an impression. Right. He, he saw who she was raw on the mm-hmm. film when she dedicated her life, saved her life for her sisters. Right. And he was like, this girl is something. And he's just like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do something with this. Mm-hmm. And he gave her the structure and the, 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 the tape and the glue. And he said, build something. And you know yeah. what? She fucking built something. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you that I think he was initially inspired by the spark of yeah. her. But I actually, I like Cinna, so don't get it twisted. I like Cinna a lot. But in the end, to me, Cinna wasn't any better than any of the other adults in her life. No, he because... He used her. Right. He used her. He literally turned her physically into the Mockingjay. Yep. In a dress that yep. was a Mockingjay. Yep. So... Um, as much as I like him and he was probably one of the best adults in her life, he still used her. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the adults failed her across the board her whole life. Oh, yeah. Everybody did. I mean, her mom like, had a mental health crisis and wasn't nope, there for her. Yeah. And like, I mean, that's and not like, really her mom's fault, but she did hold it against her mom. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, you are literally what? She was 12 when she had to start learning how to figure out her sister, feeding her sister and herself. She was 12 years old and she had to figure out how to find food. It would be hard not to hold that against her mom. Absolutely. I I, I mean, I I think with age and maturity, we learn how to forgive our parents for things like that. But in Katniss's shoes and in that moment, Mm -hmm. I ain't forgiven my mom. Well, and I think as Katniss grew through these three books, she experienced so many more types of people that she actually realized, oh, right. what was happening to my mom was that she was unhealthy. Yeah. But yeah, if, at 12, you don't understand that. Yeah. Um, what is Katniss's ultimate act of rebellion in this book? It's the berries. Is at it? The oh, ends. I don't agree. Really? Tell me, about the, tell me about the berries. I mean, she was literally willing to die instead of mm-hmm. win. Mm-hmm. She was willing to eat those berries to mm-hmm. her and her and Peter were willing to kill themselves to show that there is no winner for this games mm-hmm. over killing each other. They were mm-hmm. willing to die. Then wi- like let the other die. They, they yeah. were literally willing to themselves die for other, you know, 
versus Killy. So that's me. That's my point. I opinion. feel like that is definitely a tr- I mean, like, to me, that's my second choice. My first choice for this question is her putting flowers on Rue. It's oh, much more that's subtle. a good one. It's yes. much more subtle. It's much more subtle. She was pretty certain but, the cameras weren't paying attention. But, right. like, and then the whole, yeah. 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 You're right. Uh, um, so, I have a list of secondary characters. I don't know if you want to talk about any of the secondary characters. So, um, we're just going to go fast okay. on them. So, okay. I'm just going to name a character and you can tell me any thoughts you have. We'll go lightning round. Okay. Hey, Mitch. A drunk, funny smart uh, I'll go with all of those Gail <laughs> I have feelings about Gail come back to him I I think he's sneaky um, Madge Madge is the grandma everybody needs man Mad, no not not Mags Madge her friend who's the, oh, the mayor's daughter man, she daughter. is such a I mean sh- while she's like a key player in the books like her po- purpose and meaning is just wiped right. out in the movies. Yeah, they get rid of it in the movies. Um, um, I actually think Madge is in love with Katniss. I think so too. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Katniss's mother, who never gets a name. That poor woman was broken. And yeah. mental health obviously wasn't a big deal in the mining town they were in. Right. <laughs> Effie Trinket. Oh my god. Bubblegum. That's the only thing I think of when I think of that woman. She is nonsense personified. Nonsense personified. Bubblegum. Yes. Bubblegum. It, 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 it's fancy. It, it, ha- it has a great taste at the beginning. And then yeah. as you keep chewing it, you're like, why am I doing this to myself? Yeah. It is bubblegum. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a great description. Thank you. <laughs> um, Cinna. <clears throat> I love Cinna. I love what he did for her, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like his actions, every time I read that book, I feel like his actions sometimes are have ulterior motives. I agree. When Lenny Kravitz was cast as him, um, somebody said, oh, the gay character? And I didn't get that vibe. I didn't get, him. well, I, I got flamboyant. Mm-hmm. I didn't get gay. But he wasn't flamboyant. The only thing he had was gold eyeshadow. But, I mean... Men wearing eyeshadow sometimes people think is gay. That's Lenny Kravitz. I know. He's a fucking rock star. He is. Um, he does what he fucking wants. Caesar Flickerman. I I think that, okay. That's flamboyant. Only, he was so perfectly cast. Mm-hmm. That is my pure, bottom line. That's all I care about about that character. So perfectly cast. I love Stanley Tucci. I, I feel like if you are a fan of the selection series too, you can see Kira Cass stole copy paste. Yes. <laughs> a thousand percent. Yes. Um, I can't think of the character's name in the selection, but it's a copy. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But the, about, the TV guy. Yeah. Yeah. How about Rue? Oh, heartbreak. That's the word that yeah. goes with Rue heartbreak. All right. So let's talk about the movie. So fun fact for our listeners, Molly and I both saw the movie separately. Yes. And then we liked it so much because we, we drug our husbands to it. We liked it so much we went together and saw it a second time in the theaters. Because we enjoyed it much more the second time because we didn't have grumbling men next to us. 100%. We were both <laughs> crying at, We were both crying at the same part and still somehow got startled when the mutts jumped out. I don't know. <laughs> what do you know? What's coming? Seriously. The 12-year-olds next to us looked at us like we were crackheads. <laughs> we knew it was coming. Um, so how do you think the movie holds up compared to the book? I think I have issues when anytime I hear a book that I love is becoming a TV series or a movie, yeah, right. I have qualms. Right. Um, there are few that have done my books justice. Yeah. Um. Deb had a hand in the Discovery show, so right. that became beautiful. Um, right. Good Omens, Neil Gaiman got to be a part of it. That yeah. became out beautiful. Then Me Before You really left the salt like in my mouth. And then, so I'm pulling these out for a reason. I feel like they did such a good job 
interpreting the world Susan Cullen, Collins yeah. did. And you got to stop talking about Twilight. I keep saying Collins. <laughs> I'm never um, going to stop talking about Twilight. And I love how we get to see Katniss's point of view versus the world point of view at the same time. Yes. I, and I think it was a great interpretation, but I also think it was a movie for the fans. If yes. of the book, I yes. feel like if you did not read those books, yes. you were going into that clueless. Yes. Yes. I, my husband actually really didn't like the first movie at all. And for me, it was the same thing. Like if you don't read the book, you don't actually understand what ha what's happening. Word. I felt like they needed to do more background world building in the movie because it would have been really boring to spend two hours with Katniss in a tree. Like that would have been boring. Um, I think it was an interesting choice not to do voiceovers so that we didn't actually know her thoughts. Yes. And that again, if you are a fan, you know what she's thinking, but you cannot get a better actress to be Katniss than Jennifer she Lawrence. She was perfectly Katniss. Oh my and gosh. She I was think wonderful. Them no okay. And Katniss is a sullen character. She is uh -huh. moody. She is yeah. Rooting, I think them not doing voiceovers was a way for them to make her more sullen for right. the well, viewer. Well, you you have to hire an actress that's capable of conveying that. Yeah. Like, I believed, I knew exactly what Katniss was thinking when I looked at Jennifer Lawrence. I knew. She was, she was Katniss. Yeah. And then she won an Oscar the next movie. Like, not. Fuck. Silver Linings like, Playbook. In, yeah. Yes. In between Hunger Games and Catching Fire, she actually won an Oscar for she Silver Linings Playbook. She is so talented. Did you Very see the talented. new one she did with the new Netflix, uh, Netflix one? No, I haven't seen it yet, but I really want to. It's so funny. Yeah, She's I really so want great. To I love her. Super pregnant yeah. right now, I guess. Well, that's interesting. I didn't realize. Well, she had, had said she was leaving Hollywood because she married a jeweler in like Kentucky and she was like. Yeah. She's done. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So that's it for that one. 40 minutes on one book. Fuck me. Okay. So we're going to go on to the second one. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. All right. Catching fire. Here's your synopsis. <clears throat> in the second book in the Hunger Games series, Katniss and Peeta are going on tour to quote unquote, celebrate their victory in the 74th Hunger Games. Before they leave, Katniss receives a very unexpected visitor, President Snow. President Snow tells Katniss that she needs to convince all the citizens of Pan Am and him that she pulled on pulled out the berries to sacrifice herself and Pete at the end of the first book because she was in love for him. Love with him. After the ter this terrifying conversation, Katniss is doing anything she can to survive, from devising a plan with Gail to run with their families, lying during her speeches, and even agreeing to marry Peta. Peta, who is still heartbroken to learn that Katniss's love for him was mostly an act to survive the Hunger Games, reluctantly, dis reluctantly agrees. Their engagement catapults a series of events that concludes with a special announcement that the 75th Hunger Games, a quarter quell, will reap the tributes from an existing, the existing pool of victors, Bullshit. which means Katniss is going back to the games. Katniss devises a plan to save PETA with the help of their mentor, Hamish Abernathy, but fails to keep PETA out of the games when he volunteers to replace Hamish. Unfortunately, the arena for this year's games is full of water and no place for a girl on fire. Armed with her bow, allies, and a drive to keep to help PETA stay alive, Katniss faces horrors around the clock before taking part in a plan to kill the remaining career tributes. Around the, the clock, plan, I see what you did there. During the plan, Beta sparks. Beta separates Katniss and PETA. Johanna Mason attacks Katniss, and Katniss finally remembers who the real enemy and me. is. <laughs> There's a lot of like in my synopsis. So synopses i do a lot of like fandom stuff i was great being clever. i was being clever you're being cheeky i was i love it it's um, fantastic <laughs> uh so this book is actually my favorite book in the series mine um, too okay good do you think it's a, a solid good sequel to a solid first yes. book Yes, and we get so many okay, so usually in sequels, before we dive in, before we get it, usually when there's a sequel and we learn that there's all these new characters, you're yeah. like, "Oh, great. They're right. fucking just bringing new people in because they don't right. know what to do." Right. Oh my god, she did such a good job. I love Fantastic. every new character 
every new character you meet in this book Mm -hmm. is needed for this storyline. There is not a useless character in the bunch. Right. Right. Not a single one. I I love it. I think the conflict changes. So the first book, the conflict is me versus society. Yes. In this book, it's us versus society. Right. You know, um, and, and you have to bring in the other people for that. But I actually, as I was flipping through the books yesterday, so I could write the questions, um, the majority of Catching Fire takes place before, like it's, yes! the of the book takes place before you actually get yes! into the arena. Yes, in the, in the arena. Yeah. And to me, like, it doesn't feel like that because that one no. third of the book is Goes just fast. So- yeah. Because it's, it's happening so fast because Katniss, yeah. you can feel Katniss's anxiety. You can yes. feel Peter's anxiety. And yes. poor Hamish, that man has fucking PTSD. Right. Right? 100%. And as soon as he learns he's going back in, right. that poor man. Right. And you know what's fucking wild? And I may be jumping out of hand on your questions. I just, this just came That's to okay. me. okay. Do it. Do um. It. So as we're doing these books and we learn that Katniss's mom knew fucking Hamish growing up. Yeah. Which makes sense because right. even though district 12 right. is huge, like a landmass, there like, were, it's small and people like, okay. As soon as her, she knew her daughter was going in and she's like, Oh, Hamish survived. He'll keep my kid alive. My first thought would be, even if I'm going through trauma, I would yeah. be like, listen to Hamish. He stayed alive. I know him. Right? right. And it never is mentioned right. once in the first book. Right. Yeah. And that was just, a, it's a small one for me. Because it definitely should have been a conversation in the first book, I think. Mm, it's insinuated by their age, I guess. But I don't know that Katniss really ever gave her a chance to be a, have a conversation with her. She no. Oh, no. Her, she definitely railroaded her mom. You have to say you, you can't you do what to, you did before. Yeah. You could not right. disappear like you did before. And even though Haymitch hey, figured out a way to stay alive when he was in the Hunger Games, like he he's not the same man. He's a shell of a man. The man he was when he was in the Hunger Games. Oh, he's for also sure. he's also much older. He's not a 16 year old anymore. No. So. Um, like I, I think this is a good solid sequel. Um, it's my favorite book in the series. It's very rare that a second book will be my favorite. It doesn't matter how many books are in the series. I'm always, if I continue reading a series, the first book sucked me in, which is why my originally friend, I had my favorite, my favorite book from in the discovery trilogy is Deb's second book. So see, uh, that, see, and I didn't want to read the second book because I didn't like the first book. And right. it was the same thing with Harry Potter. I didn't want to keep reading because I didn't like it. Right. But for me, it's very rare that a second book will be my favorite. Well, it's catch sometimes, you. It'll, it'll sometimes be the third. It'll sometimes be the first. But it's very rare that it's the second one. Uh-huh. Usually the second one is where I'm like, damn it. What did they do? But this but one's no, amazing. This Not one is this amazing. One. And that is actually the reason that this is my favorite series. Because of the second book? Because she started here and ended up here. Like, how do you do that? How do you do that? I feel like, and I'm just assuming here, I feel like she had these mapped out from beginning to end before she started. And I feel like she always intended the second book to be the peak of, you can't see my hands. The peak. I'm raising my hands for those listening to the pod and not seeing us on YouTube. I am raising my hands. The peak of the yes. story, not right. the peak of one book, but the peak of the big story. So actually, when Suzanne Collins went to her editor, publisher, all that jazz to, to propose this book series, she said from the beginning, it's three books. It's going to start here. It's going to climax here. And it's going to end here. It's three books. And it's basically going to tell the story of a She war. did a fantastic job. And here's the thing. In the age in which she was publishing this book, a lot of authors were being persuaded to add additional books into their series, and which she is what happened. The trilogy, which is what happened with Twilight, that's how we actually got Breaking Dawn. They she added in a fourth book, oh. which probably could have been five books because you know, yeah, that book was long and nonsense. But yeah, Suzanne Collins was actually pressured 
Oh, I don't know if you've read the Ugly series, but that happened to Scott no. Westerfield, too. He extended his series because the publishers were like, this is really popular. Do more books. But she refused. She was actually asked to Good do another her. book and was like, no, it's done. This is my story. That's it. And There's then when no she need did, for more. Well, when she did The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, what it actually did to the series was not add to the end. Okay. It made context for the evilness of president snow okay. it also made some connections to how snow and katniss like i don't want to ruin it for you because i know you haven't read it yet but he i don't know happens, if i'll read it just hit well me. this happens in the first chapter so um in the first chapter he becomes the mentor because at the time they're trying to this is the mm -hmm. 10th hunger games and they're trying to revamp the hunger games because nobody's watching it nobody is entertained nobody cares they don't really see the point. And so he's a part of a group of students, academy students in the Capitol who are going to make this better. And so you can actually see how the Hunger Games started here and how it ends up where it is Interesting. In, in the series that we don't know and love. But he actually becomes the mentor for the District 12 girl. Oh. Who is a singer. Ah. Who is folksy and lives out in the scene and on and on was it her and on. grandma or something um i do not believe that the lineage is that tight based on some things that have happened in but the story that i'm not going to tell you but she is definitely um a relative of katniss's 100 gotcha. and i thought to me it was very much like star wars making uh starting with anakin and finding out that darth vader is anakin and luke is his son like, okay to me, it was a great addition okay to the series um it does not make you feel sympathetic for snow i really was like i don't want to feel I've heard people feel bad for him in this hell no he is 100 evil i feel some kind of way at sometimes i'm like do i feel bad for his situation i'm like no no when you listen to him talk, he, there's no redeeming qualities about him, like at all. It's and it's told from his. Well, point he's of view. never been redeeming, right? He's a capital right. born and raised. He's but never what, gonna have redeeming qualities. But what I'm saying is that she kept him evil. She didn't mm -hmm. try to redeem him. It was it was a well written book. Good. So that was like a really off topic, but let's go into my next question. Your first I, question. No, we did my first question. Did oh, you okay. think it was a good follow up? Yeah. Um. All right, so the second question. Uh, this book plays up the love triangle. Was yeah, this a necessary addition to the series? I don't even know if we need to answer this question. You kind of already answered it. You don't agree with it. I right, do so love, I do love how, I will say, I love how PETA played it up throughout mm -hmm. their time in the Capitol, getting yeah. ready for the games. I love how PETA was like, oh, we got married. We're pregnant. Like, he, yeah. he literally was just He's smart milking that love story for savvy. all it was worth savvy mm -hmm. um i actually i am going to agree with you on this i don't think the love story the, the love triangle was necessary we needed zero gale in this book there was already right. enough going on well the interesting thing is that we the, when people talk about this series they want to compare it to what we have with twilight where it's team edward or team jacob but most right. of the most of the series gale isn't even present it's well, always it, 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 it just it feels unnecessary at times yeah i it's mean just, i'm not, i'm a sucker for a good love triangle so i same. like it I'm, I'm guilty of enjoying it i it, like it but i don't think it was necessary in this uh, did i like it in the book yes did i think it was necessary for the storyline no no and oh. I, my favorite quote from the third book is the reason why. So I'm just going to skip ahead and tell you this quote, because this is the reason that I don't think you need the love triangle. Um, at the moment, this is a direct quote from the story. She overhears Gail and Peta talking about her picking whoever she needs the most to that's who she'll end up with. And her response is at the moment, the choice would be simple. I can survive fine without either of them. Word. And to me, that's why the love triangle wasn't necessary, but I love a good love triangle. So, you know, well, it's like they're, they're <clears throat> I remember that scene and it's like, they're having a conversation about her choices without her. Like they're yeah. going to pick for her one way or another. And it's just, it's, I don't know. It's men uh, making decisions for women, yeah. right? We don't need it. Right. 
All right. President Snow makes every effort to break Katniss, not just in the arena. Was there one form of mental or physical torture from the book that you felt would break you if you were Katniss? And it doesn't have to be specific to the arena. It can be at any okay, point in the so second book. I'm actually going to jump back to my point about her being weak with her sister. Uh-huh. It's when they have the mocking jays <laughs> and the the she goes jays. running towards Yes. And it's her and Finnick, and they yes. go, and they go running because it's yes. Finnick hearing Anna, and he's hearing yes. her. Yes. And like, and like yes. you're like, no, you know this is a trick. You know this is a trick. Right. He is playing on your weakness. Yes. She hears the jabber oh. day, the jays, the jabber jays oh. thinks it's prim. Finnick thinks it's Anna. That would have broke me. One hundred percent. I think that's the worst torture but of the arena. And I don't, and it doesn't even have to be my little sister. It could have been anyone she loved. Right. Well, it's not, it's not just Primrose. It's also Gail. Gail? And she hears her mom and, um, and, and, and Hamish at one point, right? I don't remember Hamish being one of them, but, um, I the, truly think even if she had heard Hamish, she would have went running. Yeah. Because he's family to her at that point. Yep. Um, the other thing that would have broken me was when she watched Senna get beaten. Yes. That would have been that would have been it. I would have I been I mean, it. he was her best friend. She really did right. not have people right. and he was her people. Right. He was one of the only people she trusted. But he was in um, the rebellion. Like Right. 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 Um but the Jabber Jays, I think that is the that is yeah, that one uh, definitely would have gotten me. That was the most heartbreaking thing and um and and the fact that it put they put a a wall up in that pie so and, that, oh, that wedge yeah, of the and they're just sitting there feeling so, it over yeah. and over again. And in the movie, at that point where Peta is like puts his head up next to her and he's like here, like here. and he's trying so hard to convey to her that she he's is there just, for her. And she's and, just there like yeah. this. And it's yeah. oh I'm rewatching yeah. the movies tonight. I have to now. Oh I, I rewatched them recently as well, um, to prep for this. But uh yeah, it was it, it it's a good scene. God. Right. Yeah. All right. Since the 75th Games features tributes of all ages, including the elderly Mags. <laughs> I love and the, Mags. And the young Katniss and Peeta. Are these games harder to swallow than the previous book where everyone was a fit teenager? I think. Um, now, I see a lot of myself in this character. Um, what is her name? Damn it. Virus. The one, no, thank you. I'm not fruity. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. No, um, the snarky girl in the, Johanna. Uh, Johanna. Johanna Mason, I feel like yeah. I see a lot of my scruffness. Uh -huh. I feel yeah. it's very equal to Johanna's. Just for the record, I actually knew who that's who you meant. I was being really funny. <laughs> You're fucking with me. Fantastic. Uh, yes. <laughs> Johanna says it best. She's like, I was told I'm going to win and I yeah. don't have to worry about this anymore. Right. And Plain and simple. Age off the books. You yeah. were promised one thing. It was practiced. It's a verbal contract. And they are literally breaking that contract. It is bullshit. Right. Right. Bullshit. Right. So I, I guess that leads into my next question. Um, do you think that uh, Snow manipulated the system or yes. was this really oh, designed? No. This was never in the cards. But no, but wanted, the literal, but the literal cards were covered in dust, and they were aged, and they no, were... <laughs> no, fuck that. Snow I agree with dick. you. I agree Snow's with you. Snow's a dick, and he did this on purpose. Snow <clears throat> knew the rebellion was growing. He knew his yeah. people. He knew their leaders would be. He would. They would call on their leaders, which yeah. ended up being their champions. And I, he was like, I, you know what? I'm gonna fucking kill them all. <laughs> I think that the um, the movie does a good job alluding to the fact that that he did this when he has a conversation with Plutarch. Yes, um, and he says, uh, uh, Plutarch says, um, 
oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. It's basically when they're talking about how to properly punish Katniss. Yes. And that it needs to be public. And I honestly think that that is, that, right. that Snow, Snow decided yep. to do it to kill Katniss. Like he can't right. just kill her. Like she's the beloved darling no. of the Capitol. But if you put her with all of the beloved characters from yeah. all of the Hunger Games that have ever existed, you right. are then going to be like, oh, I don't care about her as much as I care about Finnick. Oh, I don't right. care about her as much as I care about X, Y, and Z. You're going to be right. rooting for your person, not Katniss well, Everdeen. And since the Hunger Games is meant to be entertaining, that is the ultimate entertainment, right? It's oh, yeah. Celebrity Survivor. It's yeah. all your favorites in one place. It's, it's all the house guests. It's Celebrity Big Brother. Yeah. It's all <laughs> your favorites in one place. And they're going to kill each other. It's the all-stars episodes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, we meet a lot of characters in this book. Did you have a favorite? Um, I like the electronic duo. BD Finnick. and Virus. Yep, BD and Virus. The whole TikTok, TikTok thing. TikTok, I would, TikTok, TikTok. TikTok. Um, Joanna's and Finnick, though. They're my two favorite new ads. To the Joanna sh- is a bit hard to swallow, but Finnick is my so favorite. So my, character. and I'm your favorite person. Um, Ish. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm just saying, she warms up on you. Um, to me, yes, in the third book, I liked her better when I got to know that really she's not as abrasive. But right. Um, but Finnick is my favorite character. He actually ends up being one of my favorite characters of the whole series. Yes. Um, especially in the well. Oh my gosh, Sam Chaflin. Oh, he is dreamy. Oh. Yes. And when when uh when Finnick protects Mags yes. when when he when Mags chooses to sacrifice herself, the fact that he's in love with a mad girl, like the love is weird. I love that quote from the, the right. movie Love is weird. weird. Um but even as the books continue, when, when we get into the third book, he's the person, and I actually have this quote hanging on my wall in my office, it takes 10 times as long to put yourself back together than it does to fall apart. Yes. And he gives her the rope to keep herself together, to together. literally yeah. tie knots that's- to keep herself together. Finnick is it for me. Like, he is- he You is know that's an actual ultimate. therapy tool, right? Not tying? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, that's an actual therapy tool. It's very similar to fidget toys as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, so he he's my favorite. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, it's never revealed. Oh, no. Nope, I already asked you that question. Um, the book spends more time outside the arena than the first book. Was this a good choice based on the expectation, expectations of uh, that were built to the audience? Yes. Like, that she built in because the first book? We needed that time to get to know the new characters. We needed yeah. that time to watch the selection of each champion. We mm-hmm. need we needed that world building time. Yeah. It was and what was going on in the arena was happening fast. You needed oh, yeah. a short period of time to yeah. have because I mean, it was literally a clock. It was bung 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 like you right. were literally it was traumatic. Period. I- I think it was also necessary to build up to what was going to be essentially a war in the third yes. book. Like you needed to build to, you needed to see how the pressure was rising and yeah. how absolutely fire was catching. Like you needed to see that. Absolutely. The build. Yeah. All right. So my uh, quick fire characters, Beatty. Love. Mags. Love. Wyrus. Bash it crazy. But still love. <laughs> uh, Chaff. That is District 11 guy who's best friends with Hamish. Asshole. He ended up betraying Hamish. No, he didn't. Kind of. He doesn't, like, join the their, their little pack that he formed, but he doesn't try to kill them either. Right, but he kind of joins the careers at the same time. Actually, I think he was doing his own thing, but he wasn't trying to get the careers either. I think but he, he also was just wasn't. I, I feel like he was being selfish. I mean, Hamish hey, pretty I, much handed him his kid. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, he definitely didn't do for Hamish what I think he should have. But and you know very um, well Hamish would have done the reverse for him. But what I love is the part where he like kisses Katniss because yes, because everybody loves making her working with her. 
Yeah. They love making her uncomfortable. It is very yeah. apparent that she is uncomfortable in her own skin. So let's well, make it worse. Well, it goes back to the first uh, first book when she like doesn't want to see Peta naked. Like right. she's uncomfortable with that. Um, which I think I think that's good. Uh, Cedar, the other eleven tribute. I don't. I don't have she, any opinion. She dies in the first like fight of Five, the arena. Yeah. And then Darius, the peacekeeper who uh, ends up becoming an Avox redheaded peacekeeper. That was sad. Yeah. That was well, really I think sad. It, I think it gets even more tragic because in the third book, we find out that he was tortured to death. Yeah. It was very, sad. Very, sad. very sad. Very sad. All right. So let's talk about the movie. Um, to me, this is also my favorite of the movies. There are four Same. movies. Um, and I think this one was the closest to the book. What Agreed. did you think? Yes. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think they kept a lot of the key important por- parts. Yeah. Um, they did the arena well. They did. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel they like. They it in Hawaii. I feel like they really kept the tone of that book really tight. Yeah. And I think the only. I think the one thing I wish we saw more of. Uh-huh. Was um, we don't really get a true sense of why Phoenix there till the third movie, yeah. right? And I feel like we learn pretty quickly why he's there in the second book. So I feel like it would have been yeah. nice to have that hint, even just a score of a hint of him like taking care of Anna behind the scenes, or just a slight Annie. Indi- Annie, sorry, uh, just like a slight indication, right? Well, I think it would have been nice to see there. There, the one thing that I wish they wouldn't have cut out. Well, there was two because somehow I wanted her to say, "This is no place for a girl on fire," because it's my right. favorite line from that right. book. But we don't get an internal monologue of the movie, so she had to like say it. But right, um, and she does does it. But I wanted to see uh, Peta and Hamish and Katniss training. Yes, I wanted to see clips of the old games. Yeah, um, and I I wanted to see them training for if anything, just so Woody Harrelson could be doing some crunches because that'd be fucking hilarious. Um, but, <laughs> but I um, they, they cut that out because I think it would have slowed the pace of the yes. story. And um, they, and there's like okay, so like the scene with the damn sugar cubes, that yeah. scene bothered me in the books and the movies. Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, so it's, it's how we meet Finnick. I get it. But, but but I think but, there's other ways we could have met him. But I feel like the learning what we do about him in the third He has book, secrets. His yeah. hair is full that the His hair is full of full secrets. secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but we learn later that um he was being sold. Right. Right? Like he was being prostituted by right. Snow. And like the way that he is introduced to Katniss, I think is actually a brilliant way to introduce a character like right. that um but no i i like the movie a lot i love the clothes in the second yes. movie um the winter it's beautiful clothes, the costuming, oh my gosh the costuming yes. is gorgeous yes i really want the sweater she has that like has the yes cloth, like, and, like, i the, said it to my sister you know talking about oh my yes. gosh okay. i want that so sweater when um when uh it's like a like a cowl thing, right? Yeah, it's like a cowl neck, but only on like half. And yeah. then there's like a leather I pack sent that right to here. my little sister, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Can you make me this scarf?" And she yeah. sent me like a kind of sort of thing, but I'm obsessed with it. I know exactly yeah, what you're I, talking about. I love the clothes in that movie. We'll put a I, picture in the stories. <laughs> yeah. I um. Anyway, I I thought that book did the best job adapting. All right, so we're over an hour, but Let's we're doing okay. The last book. We're on the last book. Sticking with us, besties. We're doing good. We're doing good. Um, All right. So Mockingbird is the third book. So the third and final, yes, the third and final (laughs) book in the Hunger Games series is set mostly in District 13, a district no one knew still existed. This is a book about rebellion and war. Katniss discovers at the end of Catching Fire that District 12 has been burned to the ground, Mm -hmm. leaving very few survivors. And an effort to stoke the flames started by Katniss's minor acts of rebellion, the newly formed underground rebel rebel army uses her to create propaganda style videos to encourage the districts to rally together to defeat the capital once and for all. Of course, when they do, District 13, President Coyne will be there to step in as leader until democracy can be restored. In addition, okay. to Katniss's, in addition to Katniss's new role as Mockingjay, she is suffering from severe PTSD, a Word. concussion, 
and distrust for anyone she once considered family, including Haymitch, who broke their agreement to save PETA by leaving him in the arena. PETA is creating videos for the Capitol in an effort to save, Pat save Katniss from President Stowe, but we slowly learn that he's also being tortured using a new form of punishment called hijacking. When PETA and the other victors, Johanna Mason and Annie Cresta, are rescued from the Capitol, we learn it is the things we love that destroy us the most. Word. PETA is programmed to kill Katniss for the Capitol mutt he's, he's been wired to believe she is. Katniss, completely broken, agrees to go further into the war to get away from the broken PETA. This starts a series of events that leads Katniss to the Capitol as part of the Star Squad, a group of camera-ready soldiers whose duty it is to rally the troops by shooting and activating pods in the capital while the front line pushes towards Snow's mansion. Along the way, PETA joins their crew in a spectacularly bad decision by President Snow and her new lackey, Plutarch Heavensby. This all leads up to an explosive end and, and rebel victory and ultimately the conclusion of this epic trilogy. Nice. I know, right? It's like I should write reviews or something. You kind of do. <laughs> Isn't that what we're fucking doing right now? sarcasm molly do i need to hold up a sign <laughs> sometimes <laughs> all right um even though this book is the same length as the other two it felt longer to me or like two books in one would you agree yes i feel like um editing wasn't a part of this book as like i feel like by the time they got to this third book, they're like, eh, she knows what she's doing. We're not going to edit as heavy. And it just kind of went awry, right? Yeah, it definitely, there's a disconnect. Um, it feels like a standalone sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it doesn't feel, it's the same world, but it doesn't feel like it at points. It made sense to me that they divided it into two movies. I think yeah. they were probably doing that because it's such Twilight a, did it and Harry it, Potter did such it. And, a, it well, and it's such an intense book. Right. You need time to process all of that. You can't right. get that in an, an hour and a half, two hour and a half. But as much as I can understand why they would do <laughs> that... I think for a book purposes, if she would have divided that into two books, the third book would have been like absolute boring behind the scenes war stuff. Right. It would have been a lot less action. Right. Um, it, it, it doesn't. Okay. Time wise, it seems to move faster than the other two books. It do, does. But the pace isn't as fast. I get what you're saying. Um, but really it isn't because the whole series takes place in like, two years right the whole series she right. goes in the hunger games a year later she goes back in the hunger games and less than a year later she's home yeah and the war's over yeah so it's like it's like two years for right. three books which is kind of crazy um are katniss's new adult leaders any better than the capital leaders are both sides manipulating a young girl for their own gain no nobody's better than the other <laughs> everybody has ulterior motives everybody yeah. wants something from her it, it, it is. Mm -hmm. She has become a face and they're going to use it to their advantage. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's a pawn. Fa thousand percent. And <clears throat> a in teenager in it, to boot. She's still right. a child. Period. Right. We're, we're, and that's right. like a thing we're not really ever talked about. This girl is a child. She's a child. She's 16. She is she a child. In Hunger Games. And she is supposed to be making adult decisions throughout right. these books. And it right. is a just shit yeah. show because i would never put my kids in this position no i mean she's 17 in the third book 17 yeah. so she is still a child and um I, I think in an effort to not be a pawn in, or a piece in anyone's game she ended uh -huh. up being a piece in both games right ultimately if the rebels would have lost i they would have found a way to dispose of katniss and, and if the we rebels won Coin already had in mind a way to dispose of Katniss. That's why she sends right. PETA. Right. I honestly, <clears throat> while this is terrible, I think she shouldn't have never, I mean, based off of, if I was giving this girl advice and I was sitting down with her, I'd be like, you should have never volunteered for your sister. Either way, she's going to die. You're going to go through a lot of hell. Yeah, but we don't know that <laughs> until like the very end of the third book. <laughs> Like, literally, um, if she's sitting down with a therapist at the end of this, and, like, the therapist is like, 
you know, you didn't have to do any of this. Your kisses. Well, she does. She does have a therapist by the end of this. <laughs> Honestly, I think the only adult that is trustworthy and is still pretty garbage at times is Haymitch. But he's an alcoholic. He's, you can't trust him. He, he, I do believe that he loves Katniss. Like that's family to him. Right. He doesn't oh, have anybody else. No, he's, I think that's she's his, his daughter. But right. he also, but he still, but he still allows her to be used. He's still focusing on the big picture. Period. Right. Like I like, I like that he steps in and takes away all the makeup and all the crap that. Yes, like, because it's not her. Yeah, it's, it's never been her. Right. Right. Um, this book is about war, mm-hmm. but I have a question for you. Is it more or less violent than the other two? Less. Because it's not hand-to-hand physical combat. We don't yeah. get a bloody, nasty death yeah. until, like, we're further in in this, right? Like, um, when they're in the tunnels and the mutts are attacking them and they're running for their lives, that is when it starts to get gruesome again for the first time yeah. in this book. And we've seen battles, you know, yeah. and we've seen explosions and we've seen right. devastation and shit between there and like we've seen what happens to her district but it's just not the same i i agree with you but i also think that the way that we perceive war Mm -hmm. is less than is different than the way we perceive violence like when i think of war i don't think it's violent i mean it is you're literally killing people because we're detached from it right because you can't put yourself into it it, it feels, violence feels like there's not a purpose to it. Like, you're doing it without purpose. Yeah. And so, like, really, in my opinion, the only true act of violence that happens in the third book is mm-hmm. when Katniss shoots an arrow through that woman's heart who's eating the sausage and opens, like, her door. And, like, they're <laughs> all there. And she just murders her. And they actually cut that from the movie. Right. Um, and it's really the only time that you see Katniss choose violence. The rest right. of the time... She's just trying to do what Hamish tells her. Stay right. alive. Stay alive. Yeah. Think stay that alive. Time she, she actually chooses that's violence. A, that's a that's a, a discovery quote, by the way. Think stay alive. Uh it's in the second book. It Philippe, uh mm-hmm. Matthew's father says it to uh-huh. says it to uh Diana. Oh right, because they're back in time at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally off topic. My bad. Think All stay right. alive. I love that quote. I love it. <laughs> All right, this book lays on the lays the love trial triangle hard. Yeah, this is the point that we actually have both boys in the same place, sort of. I mean, it's when they're in the capital. Um, so I have a question: Are you Team Peta, Team Gale? Maybe if team I have Katniss? to pick, if I have to pick, do I have to pick a boy? You can be Team Katniss. I am Team Katniss, but if I have to, gun to my head, picking a boy. I'm picking PETA. PETA puts Katniss's feelings above yeah. his own. Gail thinks about the big picture. Gail is, in this context, Gail is one of the grownups. He yeah. does not. Well, he is. He's, he's 18 in. But he's making grownup decisions without yeah. Katniss. He's not referring right. to her. He's not asking her questions. He's not, right. while he's concerned about her, he's mm-hmm. not concerned about her the way PETA is or her mother is. Or right. her sister is. He's right. worried about how she's going to fuck up what he's working on right now. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely Team PETA. Um, I think Gail, He's also your book boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Gail wants Katniss because it's convenient. It's what, and I think it's what's expected. They're supposed to be together, right? That's what everybody yeah. in town always thought. But I actually think... Um, I, I don't ever think it would have worked between the two of them. No, no. But I do think they're too similar. I think they're right. they they grew up like siblings. It's it's right. just too much. But I think that Peta, um, I think he needs Katniss in ways that uh, Gail doesn't need her. I don't. And think I don't Gail just, needs her at all. And I don't just. Yeah, that's true. Stop that! <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I don't just mean that he needs her because um, he's not capable of caring for himself, because he is. Um, but I think he needs her because she completes him. 
Oh, and yeah. I would say that that's the same is true for her. I know you don't like that they ended up together, uh, but I, I think I, I think they complete each other. She I mean, they do. She needs to. She needs her edges softened, and he is what does that for her, right? And, because and he, she keeps him sturdy. And by the end, they're both so fucked. They're so <laughs> broken. They're, they're so, so broken. broken, and they make one whole person at that point, right? Yeah, real but I or feel, not real, right? Uh, mm. I love real it. Or not real. 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 All right. So who's the more trustworthy leader? Snow or coin? No. <laughs> that, that wasn't an option. <laughs> it is the only option. I don't trust either of them. As soon as you meet um, Snow, yeah. she, she, she gives me off swindler vibes. As soon as yeah. I meet her, she is a swindler. She is. Well, it, it's. Ugh. I don't think this actually happens in the book. I think it's in the movie when Boggs is explaining how they have the fleet and how yeah. they were able to survive. And Katniss says, that sounds an awful lot like what PETA said. And y'all called him a traitor. Yeah. I, 100%, I 100% think that Snow was biding her time until she could take over. And mm-hmm. she saw an opportunity in what yep. Katniss did. Mm-hmm. And she, then she manipulated Katniss to continue creating those opportunities. Fantastically. For her. Yeah, oh, uh, a thousand percent. And what Katniss did in the end was completely justified. And honestly, a huge surprise to the ending. Oh, like Katniss huge surprise. killing President Coyne. Spectacular Whoa. ending. What I a mean, fucking I, twist. What a but, fucking twist. Smart. And you, let's not lie, it was needed. Mm-hmm. It was smart, it was needed. Though. It was, was just going to be another tyrant taking over. Right. Period. Right. Right. No, that bitch right. is crazy. Right. Um, is Katniss a rebel leader and icon, or is she just a girl with a good who is good with a bow? A girl that's good with a bow. She is a she is a symbol by circumstance. 100% she has agree. She has no desire to be a symbol. She has no desire to be a rebel leader. <laughs> she just. Took the place of her little sister, and the mm-hmm. dominoes started falling from there. Yeah, fate has put her in that direction. She did not I, want that direction. I think she has opportunities where she shows, like she's a rebel leader. Mm-hmm. And one is when fu- you see that fire is catching, and if you burn, we burn. With if we you. burn, you yes. burn too. After she brings the t- thing down, but, and yeah, but she's not making those things because she wants to be a leader in the rebellion. Right. I think she would have been very happy staying in district 12 her whole life. Like Mm -hmm. had the hunger games not happened, she would have been somebody who stayed in district 12 her whole life and took care of her family. Like, I don't think she would have ever involved herself in the politics of the country. Absolutely not. She didn't, uh, she just cared about (laughs) keeping her family and her people alive. And I think that's it. I think really her goal was stay alive. Yep. I mean, um, I think that's yeah, also I, trauma. Trying right. to stay alive is trauma. And that girl had been uh, through trauma before she even jumped in the Hunger Games. Yeah. All right. Peter is having a difficult time coping with reality. He invents a game called Real or Not Real. This helps trigger accurate memories. What do you think of the storyline? I love this. One, this is... Um, they do something very similar to Patients with Comas. Really? That have like what they feel like are false memories or unsure memories. And they play very similar. It's not a game really. It is a memory memory building exercise. But it it is a beautiful way for PETA to reconnect not with just Katniss. But everyone that was a part of his life beforehand. Right. And it is a great way to show us that this broken character is trying to fix himself. It is. Right. It's beautiful. I love it. Right. It was very, it's smart writing. It's so smart. And I think it's being so intimate later in the story, you know? Yes. Um, and it becomes Especially a thing, when she's sure. saying, when she's saying things like your favorite color is orange and my favorite color is green. And she's like spiraling because she right. wants him he to remember, remember shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite part of this book? I have two favorite parts in this book. As much. Okay. This is going to be, I'm a fucking contradiction. As I know much, what you're going to say. and <laughs> You are a fucking contradiction. <laughs> as much as I hate her ending up with PETA, I love the ending. Mm-hmm. I really do. Mm-hmm. I, I, 
I, I think it was a beautiful way to end the series. I love that they get a happy ending. I love that they get this calm life. I love it. Um, and also, okay. So, and then the other thing, I have one more and, and I need to finish what I, my thought before I say why I love this scene. I don't okay. love it for the reasons you, like a crazy person. Primrose's death, I love. And the reason I love it is not because I love that Prim died. It gave Katniss a purpose. And that girl did not have a purpose up to that point in that war. Mm-hmm. And as soon as Other Prim than died. surviving. Right. As soon as her sister died, as soon as her, that happened, mm-hmm. it set clear boundaries and lines yeah. for Katniss. It yeah. put life into her focus. And she realized she had to fucking do something. And it, it wasn't also- about survival anymore. And it showed her who fucking Gail was. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that. It showed her the truth about Gail. <laughs> um, so my two favorite parts are Finnick and Annie's wedding. I think oh, it's really that cool. is beautiful. I love, and, like, that, I love that there's a fiddler that made it out of District 12 and they're all and Pita, dancing. And Pita made the cake. And, and Pita made the cake. Um, oh. And then my other one is You Love Me, Real or Not Real. And she looks at him and says, Real. real. I love that. I cry every time I yes. read it. I cry. It's beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the first time I read this book, I love the ending so much that I said it was my favorite. After rereading reading it several times, I realized that it's really just the ending that I like. Yes. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on this book overall? It's so fucking long. But it's not any longer. Than no, it just two. feels longer. Yeah, it does. It feels longer. Um, But there are pieces of it. That I'm like, right. oh, I really like those pieces, you it know? It feels like it had a lighter editing hand to it. It's still Suzanne Collins. It's still her work. It's still her world building. It's still all her. But there's just something missing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah and, I mean, I agree. And I think it's because we went from... I'm not saying that kids fighting in an area is light, but... Mm-hmm. There is a sense of sunshine when it comes to the Hunger Games versus this war. This war took these books from in the right. sunlight to gray. It's a tone change. But it I is. Actually think, but I actually think the tone change was necessary because it, we are now in a war. War. And it um, was necessary. It's just, I don't know. But I, it's a lot, I, it, and it feels like a big change, real yeah, fast. It does, which I guess, like I said, the whole thing takes place in a year and a half, two years, something yeah. like that. So it makes sense that the change is so fast. All right, so the ending: Prim dies, all the things Katniss d- did to save her, and she still dies. So my question for you: Was this Gail's plan, or was it Snow manipulating her? What caused? Prim's death. Gail. I a thousand percent blame Gail. I I don't think... I think them killing their own people Uh was a thousand percent calculated. Yeah. A thousand percent. I cannot... And It was a thousand percent calculated. Why would Prim be there? She wasn't even old enough. Nope. I mean, I get it. She's a healer. She... No. I think that Snow saw an opportunity, sorry, Coin saw an opportunity that would really break Katniss. And I think that she yeah. thought if Katniss, he- if Prim died, that Katniss would officially be Do on her something. side. Yeah. Right? And it um, just pissed her off and hated everybody. But I have to say, I think this was a smart way to eliminate Gale from the love triangle. It oh, wasn't facts. It wasn't like you just wrote him off because he went to go be with somebody else. He's no longer even a possibility for her because he is the reason her sister is dead. Dead. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. All right. Secondary characters lightning round. Okay. Annie. Annie Cresta. Love. I love the love, little crazy girl. Um, I love her. I love balance. that she ends up having a baby. I love her balance with Finnick, too. I mm-hmm. like their hot, cold mm-hmm. thing. I love yes. that. Yes, I, I do, too. It I do softens too. Finnick in a way you don't get to see. Yeah. He's different with her. Yeah. And I think he's his true self with her. Yeah. Uh, Plutarch? Take him or leave him. He to- was a necessary part of the war. 
to me, he is the kind of person that goes on whatever side he thinks can win. Yep. Like, I think if he didn't think Quinn could win, he would have gone back to snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. He's a flip-flopper. Uh, flip flop, yeah. flip flop, flip flop. Yeah. But I do think, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot the actor's name who plays him. Oh, um, he died. Right. Of he drug actually, overdosed. Yeah. While they were filming the fourth movie, actually. Um, I think he was a good choice. Uh, oh, he was a perfect choice. He, he did a really great job with Plutarch. What is his name? Um, Hopkins something? All right. Molly's going to look it up, but I'm going to- looking it up right now. Keep going. But we'll link the IMDb page for all the movies. We'll put them in the, the notes. Um, how about Beatty? Um, I liked having him in this book, um, this movie. It was important. I liked him less in this movie, but I will say Seymour Hoffman. Yes, Philip Seymour Hoffman. That Which is. he died in between them filming first book and second, it, first movie and second movie, yes. and so they had to use clips from the first filming to like. Yes, and they actually there was a part that he was supposed to have at the end that they that took they, out. They took out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I have to say, Beatty in this book reminds me of the scientists who helped the Nazis. Yes. They were in it for the science and not in it for what their science but is now you're, do. But now you're tainted by that title. Right. Yeah. I think he was just trying to survive, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, how about Boggs? Her, her commanding officer. In oh, the I like bug. Bogs. I like Bogs and the Bugs. I loved. Yeah. I loved that little yeah. dynamic and that little like that little grunt do- dynamic. I like that Bogs, even though he was basically uh, the right hand man to President Coin, he told Katniss she's going to ruin you essentially. And like, I don't feel like <clears throat> he was out I- to protect her. I feel like he saw a child. He yeah. was one of the true characters that saw Katniss and goes, that's a kid. Period. Yeah. Bottom line. It was. Well, when he tells her, and I can't remember if this happens in the book or just the movie, but when he tells her, you deserve to live, like, you you get, you're, I'm going to make sure you get to live a long life. Yeah. And she's like, why? And he's like, because you've earned it. Like For to me, sure. to me did. that he's a character. He was one of the adults you could trust. Yeah. Um, Johanna Mason. We already know love. you love her. I love her. I like that we get to see her be vulnerable in this book. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. She's <laughs> stealing Katniss's IV, yeah. walking over, putting it in herself. <laughs> and it disappoints me how much they cut out of Johanna's character in the movies. Yes. I think to- she's important for Katniss's rehab. She is, and I think it's also important that she's dealing with her own PTSD because, like, she can't she can't bathe because no, the water was the water is just too much. Yeah, uh, Cressida, that was the uh, director that was with. I them. like I like her and the bugs. Yeah, I like Politan her and Caster. The- those are the yeah. bugs. Uh, Masala was her assistant. I like him less than yeah. the other ones. Uh, Commander Paler, which was Boggs' second in command. I kind um, of don't remember Paler much. I'm Commander not gonna lie. Paler, to me, um, she trusted Boggs. And yeah. I think I think she knew that when he gave the um, the pod orders her thing yeah. to her that um, that he she was going to follow that. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't Commander Paler. That was Jackson. Commander Jackson. Paler was the one in District Eight where the hospital gets blown up. Yeah, and then and then she ends event- eventually. She was the a president. tribute, right? Commander yes. Paler was once a tribute. No, that was the the commander in two. The blonde. No. Chick. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna look. Um, commander Paler ends up becoming president. She's elected the first president in the new democracy. Um, Katniss's prep team, they end up being important in this story. Right. They're still not my favorites. No. I. I mm. All right. Um, so let's talk about the movie. So we have two movies and they add content to actually make it work into two movies, which is weird because they still right. left out a bunch well, of shit. Okay. I have a big beef of Effie being in this last Movie. Yes, but you know why they did it, right? 
because Elizabeth Banks is fucking Elizabeth Banks and she's gold. Because it's Elizabeth Banks. She's um, a spectacular I actress. I have nothing right. against the woman. Right. I just don't think it honored the books. No, I don't either. And also, one of the things I liked about the book was at the end, when Effie comes back, she has a tormented look to her. So Katniss yeah. knows that at some point she was also tortured. Right. Um, and they don't talk about it, but yeah. No. Um, so I had a few things in this these movies that really bothered me that they changed. So I just want to okay. talk about those. Let's do it. All right. So the first one is like when when they're being bombed when district 13 is being bombed uh-huh. and they're all like going down the stairs to, you know, have the bomb drill, the yeah. bomb drill in the book. They all go in a very calm, orderly fashion. And Katniss is remarking at how ridiculous oh, yeah. it is that like everybody is remaining this calm and the movies, they're like pushing and shoving it's and fantastic. she falls over. Yeah. It's, it really bothers me to me. That is the equivalent to how much you are annoyed by the fact that, uh, Dumbledore Did comes in and is like, Did you yes. put your name in the goblet of fire? <laughs> Did you put your name in the goblet? <laughs> Calm the fuck down. No. Right. <laughs> right. I agree. It is an unnecessary change in the movie. Yeah. And then the other one that really bothered me is that um, Katniss sneaks to the Capitol. Yeah. In the movie. And she earns her spot there in the books. She I'm sure really, is. really, really bothered by that. Really Ex- bothered I, by sh- that. I agree. She d- definitely deserves that arc. <laughs> Um, so I have one more question, but before okay. I get to that, I want to say, so you have read the audiobooks and I have read the audiobooks. So the original narrator for the audiobooks, I can't think of her name. I'll link it below. But when I listened to them the first time, I, I really, really didn't like her because to me, she is too old to be cat. She, oh, she sounded like a grown woman. Yes. Right. Right. Um, there is a new version of the Hunger Games series that Tatiana Maslany has recorded. Hmm. And so when I was prepping for these episodes, Tatiana Maslany, for those of you who don't know, she is the star of Orphan Black. She plays all the characters in Orphan Black. She sure um, as hell does. She's she an plays amazing. Them good. Yes, and she's an amazing actress, and I want to say that I 100% suggest, if you want to do the audiobooks version for these books... Do her variation? Get Tatiana Maslany's. Um, they were available for free through my library's Hoopla app. Nice! Um, not sponsored. So that'll but- be on Libby as well, then? Yes, yeah, so it probably will be on Libby. Um, just look for what version is there. Um, actually, I think Libby had the old versions, oh. so... Yeah. Um, but it depends on your library. Yeah. So, um, but I 100%, 100% recommend this. So my last question for you is the hunger games like twilight created a shift in literature. Why literature? Have you read any other dystopian series and do you feel like they, how did you feel like they held up? I've read some post, Uh um, Uh some were written around the same time. Some were written before and some were written after. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot that don't hold a candle to this. All of them. None of them. There is a lot that don't hold yeah. a candle to this. And yeah. I just, I don't know. It, so it, I, it, it's hard to say. I don't like compare because the ones that I do enjoy, like the selection, aren't the, the same. Right. It's not the same. It's not the same right. kind of dystopian worlds. Right. I love the selection. So that's a positive one for me. The Red Queen is dystopian fantasy, which I think uh-huh. you would like. Um, the first book in that series is amazing, but the rest of the books were just lackluster. Like, I honestly own all of the books and had to read the last one as an audiobook because I just could not force myself to so, read it. So um, around the same time I read this, I read the first Unwound. Did you ever read that series? No. Uh-uh. Um, so it's in a... It's set in a post-apocalyptic esque world, I guess you could say, Uh um, where you get to choose if. So, say you have a kid and you decide a by. I can't remember the exact age, but I think it's thirteen. I'm guessing you decide Uh by the age of thirteen that this kid's just not working out for you. You can unwind them and have them pretty much aborted. The bodies are the child is donated to science so they can like what the give fuck? donate organs and stuff. It is it is insane. But the un, I'll put it in the notes for people to see. Well but that it, sounds actually good. I might have to add that to my TBR. Um so another one is mash a spot is, to fill. <laughs> uh, the other another one is Unwind mashed. it's called. Unwind. Unwind. 
So the Match series is uh, dystopian sci-fi. And okay. I read that one because it was recommended as a read-alike for The Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. It is not as good as The Hunger Games. Um, and the love triangle in that series is central to the story. Like, it oh. matters that there's a love triangle. Um, so, but that one's really good. Um, Unwind came out in 07. Hunger Games came out in 08. So no, around the same around time. The same time. Uh, Delirium, I read the Delirium series last year and loved the series. I feel like the ending didn't get, uh, it, it didn't really get there for me, but I loved the whole series. Um, and Divergent series, which Divergent. I- Okay, Divergent feels mm, like a knockoff of Hunger Games. It does. The first book for Divergent is really good. The second book for Divergent is terrible. The third right. book for, for Divergent is even worse, but I actually like the ending of that. I just feel like they were, they were on the coattails of Hunger yeah. Games and they mm-hmm. needed a filler. But you period. know, have you seen the Divergent movies? I saw so the they're... first one. So they stopped there watching suppo- after that. <laughs> there were supposed to be four movies. They were dividing the third book into into two movies. Like well, the, they the cut other it ones short, in. didn't they? Um, they never made the fourth movie because it did so spectacularly poorly at the box oh, office. Man. They decided they were going to make the fourth movie into a mini series, and the actors who played the characters were like, "That's not what we signed up for. We're not doing right. that." So everyone that has only seen the movies thinks that that book ends on a happy note. And seriously, so spoiler like, alert, it does it not. Does not. <laughs> it absolutely does not. And that was actually something I did like about the series that like that one ended true to the characters and not right. a happy ending. So, okay. So that's all I have. Do you have anything you want to add? Um, I do had, I had one question. Mm hmm. If you are stuck in this dystopian world and uh-huh. you are from Hunger Games, uh-huh. what district do you think you would have belonged to? Um, I think I probably would have done the best in uh, either like the textiles district because I'm crafty. Uh-huh. Or um, in the uh, in district three where they make a lot of tech stuff because um, I'm pretty techy. Okay. Um, like I couldn't build a computer the way my husband can, but like I'm very creative and can come up with like the big ideas. So I think mm-hmm. that would have been good. I mean, I would wanted to be in the Capitol because that's where people like right. Food. <laughs> I, would, I would hope I was in the Capitol, but my upbringing, my childhood, my skill set from that age, I would have been in twelve. Yeah. Like based off of my parentage and everything. I mean, when they filmed it, it looked like my hometown. Like. Yeah. It, it, it's just it's it's actually filmed in virginia i know <laughs> well it, the virginia hills look a lot like the new york hills same well, treescape all of it yeah, yeah well um i i think um as much as i would have liked to be in the capital because you know that's where Safety. they're not starving <laughs> the capital citizens are deplorable and i wouldn't have wanted to be one of them right they're right but it honestly they were a product of their environment yeah yeah. So, um, that's well, it. That's all I got. So, it. I I thank you for joining us on this very long episode because this is my favorite series. I feel like we did it justice today. I feel mm-hmm. proud of this episode. So, um, that's all I have. I do want to say what we're going to be coming. What's coming up on the pod? So. We have next week, we wrap out the month of March with Molly's pick, The Lost Apothecary. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to read that. This is a copy from the library. Support local libraries. We love local libraries here on the pod. Um, I'm actually listening to the audiobook um, also through uh, the library. I'm listening on the Hoopla app. And then we are going to kick off the month of April. I have some very exciting news for our listeners. The month of April, we are kicking off with The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And we have a special guest, back by popular demand, Nurse Nurse K! (laughs) Let me tell you what. She has no idea what she's getting into reading this book. I'll tell you what. I actually think she's never read it. Um, No. And so... So we're, we're about to She's destroy her. <laughs> this book destroys you. Um, Seriously. But, but uh, John Green, my favorite author. This is a fantastic book. Great a book. Sad, sad start to April, but uh, like the month, not me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but we're going to have Nurse Katie here, which is always no, it's, exciting. Oh, it's a sad start for April. 
<laughs> and also in the month of April, uh, we have another special guest who will be joining us. Our fantastic editor, the love of my life. The my guy husband, you all know as... <laughs> our editor. My husband, Tom. <laughs> Tom will be here to talk about his favorite book, um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But so he is stuff. hosting. He's hosting. We're now, reading... He- He's already read it again and like I know he put the notes in the drive. I saw, man. He's he's so he's ahead of it. I know. Well, he had to read one book. We have to read all of them. (laughs) (laughs) Let's not give him too much. Book he already knows. We love you, Tom. But come on. Um. Well, that's it. That's it. All right. So we'll one forty five. Yeah. So we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Book Besties. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The views discussed here are those of Molly and April, not those of anyone else. Today's book was The Hunger Games series by Suzanne Collins. Your book besties are Molly Biggs and April Watkins. Editing by Thomas Watkins and music is Sleep Sweetly by Prigida. Don't forget to follow Book Besties on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. If you'd like to contact the Book Besties, please email us at bookbestiespod at gmail.com. Mail.com.